Hey guys, back out on the ice here with Wyatt Wolstein. Uh, he is an expert on Vexilar flashers, and there's always been a lot of interest on flashers versus sonar versus panoptics. So today we're out on the ice slaying a bunch of perch and comparing these different ice units, uh, electronics, and seeing uh, which one is the right one, the right choice for you. Well guys, I've uh... Grown up on Vexilars, you know, fishing for up here on Curlew Lake. Fishing with them all the time, and I've never really known sonars too much, so I was stuck with the Vexilars. So this is a Vexilar FLX-12. So you guys can see, here's my jig right here. Uh, these are all fish right below me. I'm gonna work it down to them. With the gain settings you for Vexilars, you have green, orange, and red for your colors. Your green setting would be your weakest signal you have. Orange would be your, you know, you're not your strongest signal, but kind of in the middle. It's kind of on the edge, almost under your bait, under your transducer. And then the red is going to be your strongest. If you go to a bit newer Vexilar, they have different color modes you can do if you're colorblind or if you like a different color better than the colors they provide, they have that option too. So anyways, as I was saying, oh, came off perfect. So with this one, I like to use, uh, right here we're sitting about 30 foot of water. I can tell that, cause here's the bottom. I like my, right here at 15 foot, or it says 15, but it's gonna be times two, so that's 30. So also with the Vexilars, you have multiple different ranges. Uh, I think with the Vexilar, FLX 20s and 28s and 30s, you have an AZ, so it counts as auto zooming. So you just turn it to that and it automatically goes to where you need it. This mode don't have that, but so if I went to times three, it would be zero through 60, times four is zero through 80, times six is zero through 120, and you saw how much this narrowed up. You wanna have as much room as you possibly can. So also with these Vexilars, I have Interference Rejection, which is also with the other Vexilar we'll talk about later. Ha uh, it has a few modes, but this one has 20. So if I'm sitting around somebody with a hummingbird or somebody else that's putting transmit that's transmission kind of in the similar area I am, I can just mess with my interference here. And I don't have all the clutter, so I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can pick it. Yeah, you can see how it's kind of flashing right here. I'm picking up that uh, Vexilar over there. So I'll just go back down to where I have no interference and I'm good to go. Also, I have an, a high gain here. So with that little tungsten, I'm sitting right about three and a half, four. So it just pretty much just brightens up and strengthens my signal. All my green, the green lines you see here are faint signals that are on the outside of the ring I'm fishing in. It's about a seven and a half foot radius around it. Your orange is going to be closer to your cone, and then the red is going to be your strongest signal, and it's going to be straight under your transducer. So with this one, I have a little bit more. I have a low power setting, so if I'm fishing within uh, within 20 foot of water, the fish can feel, feel that signal. Believe it or not, it makes a big difference when you're fishing up shallow. And Vexilars is so strong, the fish can feel it, so they made an option where if you go to low power setting, the fish are, are more apt to come in and you can use your Vexilar the same exact way and don't have to worry about scaring any fish off. With that, I also would like to point out the uh, this Vexilar also has a night mode. So if I click it, yeah, see how it dimmed down? The numbers actually brighten if we were in a tent or something. So it's not so bright on your eyes. You're not straining your eyes trying to look at it because these are actually really bright when you're working in a tent. So that's also a nice feature that these Vexilars have. A few of the high points I like of these is that how strong my signals are for this flasher. I also like, I've noticed that uh, with some of them, they're really small, really cluttered. And then there's some with nice big dials like this one. So I can tell it's really clear, much clearer picture than what other ones would be. My first unit ever was this FL8 or FL8 SE. The, you don't have near as much of the uh, settings that you have compared to this one. This is an FLX-12 here on my right. No, it has uh, eight interference rejection settings compared to the 12 over here where it has 20. 
Also, this is a more of a uh, manual dial than it is anything else. It's not near as clear as this guy, if you guys can tell on camera right now. So there's my, so there's my jig. I'm a, I'm a little rusty on this unit here. But here's my jig here. It's a green, uh, it's a lighter mark because I don't have my gain turned up very much. There's a fish coming up to it. So that fish is red, so I know that fish is right up under my jig. Compared to that Vexilar I just showed you over there, everything's a lot denser. You can't really decipher things near as much. So I know there's fish there, I just don't know how many because this is only a nine degree cone. So it's only getting about four or five foot of the bottom right here, in this depth at least. So also with the interference rejection, this one just has a button right here. So along with this one, it's a lot neater on this guy, obviously. Along with this one, this one has a lithium battery. I think it's a Dakota lithium in here. This battery has lasted, I think I've taken it fishing three or four trips without charging it at once, compared to your normal batteries that you buy from the stores, which you char try to charge at least once after every outing. Yeah, so this is a Helix 7 Hummingbird and it runs on a 10 amp hour lithium battery. And I'm gonna get about one and a half days on the ice before I need to recharge, just because that screen size so gobbles up a lot of electricity. That's that's the one thing I like about the Vexilars is that they don't have all that screen to light up. They just got their flasher unit. It doesn't draw that much battery along with this one. This one has a bunch of other gadgets on it you can use. Mm -hmm. But if I switch over to the 12 here I just bought, this one just has your normal Vexilar battery in it. I can, I've ran it two days max without charging it. I just don't like to go any farther past than one day because I don't want it to yeah. stop when it or just die while I'm fishing. The far one there, the that's the 18, right? This is the 12. The 12. The 12. You have a sealed lead acid battery in there. Yep. About how much does that weigh? Oh, five, six pounds. Okay. And so this one with the lithium, the smaller unit, way lighter. A couple pounds probably. But, yeah. Max. So that's that's probably one of the lightest most portable units you can probably oh, yeah. get with a lithium battery. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the nicest ones, especially if it's light ice and you aren't packing a lot. You can just throw this anywhere. You can even carry it in your hand. You don't even hardly notice it's there. And what are those currently retail for about right now? This one I just bought for 400. I'm not sure what these guys are going for. Probably if I had to guess, 280, 300. Yeah, so Somewhere pretty affordable. Yeah, yeah, really affordable. But they have a long lifespan. It's oh, one of really the, long. It's one of the uh, things yeah. I've heard about Vexilars is that they're durable and can take a beating. Yeah, funny story about that. We were on Cascade last year and the pin broke on our snowmobile and I was going down the lake and this, the sled took a tumble. Sled was completely totaled. Vexilar and all of our electronics were in it. The Vexilar was just fine. Never had an issue rolling down the ice for about 30 yards. Awesome. Um, so here I have a Helix 7. This is their ice unit. Uh, one of the benefits of sonar obviously is that you can use it both um, on hard water and on open water. And I use this uh, down imaging and sonar and GPS when I'm out in my kayak fishing. So I can use it both situations. Also with hummingbirds uh, and other sonars, they tend to be a little bit uh, more expensive. Uh, than what you're gonna pay for uh, with a flasher only units. This one runs around seven to eight hundred dollars. This is the down imaging and GPS unit. If you pay for sight imaging, you're gonna pay for more. So oftentimes with their ice units, you're paying for more for the, the open water settings than you are for the hard water settings. So the hard water settings are pretty much standard across the entire Hummingbird Helix series. Um, this comes with a chirp transducer, so it has alternating frequencies to help you pick up those smaller targets and get a clearer target. And it has six settings of interference rejection, at least for hummingbirds. Uh, okay, so here on my Helix, you can see I've got a lot of interference here uh, because Wyatt's got his loud mouth Vexilar going over there. <laughs> uh, I can actually clean up this signal by going down to chirp interference rejection. And here I've cleaned it up quite a bit. Uh, it actually looks pretty good there. I can still see a little bit of the pulse, the strong pulses from the Vexilar, but down here I can see lots of perch down along the bottom here. Um, I can manually set the depth as I've done here, or I can go to my menu and have it do auto. So I can just scroll back to auto here real quick. And it does a pretty good job of breaking along the depth here. If you set it manually, then you'll get a little bit less uh, wasted space on the screen down here on the bottom. Otherwise you can see tons of perch here. 
On the right-hand side here, I have my RTS window, which is basically just a verticalized uh, version of that flasher that Wyatt was showing you. Um, I can make that narrow, or medium or narrow, or I can just make it go away completely uh, by going back to the menu and turning it off. So we'll start with off. You can see my jig going down right here. There are quite a number of perch down there right now. It's just a solid line of perch. I've got them stacked up 10 foot off the bottom. And you can see a couple fish coming up. Okay, so let's switch away from traditional sonar view. Um, obviously, I also have GPS on here. Uh, I don't have bathymetry data advanced. I don't have Lake Master on here. So this is pretty rudimentary depth data. But you can see I'm out in a basin here. Um, some islands around me. Uh, but it deeper and I'm just kind of out in the middle of this basin, which is pretty typical Northwest perch habitat during the winter time. Eh? They're not really structure lovers. They just wander the flats eating Chironomids and shrimp on the bottom um, So not a lot of information there, but this is nice because I can Mark my point and I can also mark it with auto chart live and you see I just built a custom depth map um, so if I zoom in it's giving me a depth reading and I can actually go out and mark more points as well or I can just mark a waypoint say since I'm catching a lot of fish here I can mark this waypoint come back here in the future and catch more fish this is a combination of the flasher and the sonar I'm just going to go to the flasher because I want to show you the features of that one of the things I will complain about with the hummingbird screens is they get very dirty very fast um, more so than my garment screens so they just tend to smear worse uh, but you have your battery reading here your interference rejection and then this tells me the diameter of my cone at that at the depth I'm in so I'm 31 feet of water there's nine feet diameter on the cone so this is the bottom here at 31 feet so zero to 36 is my range. My gain is set at 14. And these are all fish. And that's just a giant stack of perch down there. Uh, they're just thick as thieves in here right now. And I'm gonna drop my jig down and let you see the difference of how that looked versus the flashers um, that Wyatt was showing us on the Vexilar. So there's my jig going down on the right-hand side of the screen. This random flashing here is interference from their Vexilars. Okay, one thing you'll notice is um, unlike his screen, which had complete flashes across, if I go to the menu here, I can change the flasher style to full color. So now it looks a lot like his screen. Here's my jig. Here's all the fish down here. Getting some interference from his transducer, but not terrible. Uh, but I actually prefer what's called a scope setting. So if I go to menu, go to a scope. Now the strength of the return is a function of both. There's a fish coming up to my jig right here. The size of the mark and the strength of the return is a function of both color and the diameter. So if they fill the screen, they're pretty much right underneath the cone. I'm going to drop my jig right into this school of fish right here. So I have a question for you. Yeah. So if you had the hummingbird set up on your boat, mm -hmm. Could you just take that hummingbird and plug it in right into your boat with the same trans with that transducer you have on your boat that for your humming from hummingbird or so this uh, transducer is really designed for ice fishing so it's a narrow yeah. cone yep. and uh, it does not provide the imaging yep. right so if you want to use your if your helix has down imaging or side imaging you're gonna have to use that separate that separate trans one transducer yeah. and I get a lot of questions from guys about can I use my open water transducer through the ice. And the answer is yes, but you probably don't want to because that cone is substantially broader, much weaker, right? You talk about how powerful the Vexilar signals are. And it's true because I can actually, uh, I picked it up and I'll pick it up on the camera here. When you picked up the transducer and pointed it towards me, the camera was picking up the tick, 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 yeah. tick. You could feel it. And I can't do that with, if I pick up this and point it at my, my face, I can't hear anything. Um, the camera wasn't picking it up, but I definitely hear it when you pick it up on the Vexilar. So. I think right here about this depth, it's a... That's why they're probably so good at picking up those really small targets. And I know that with the Helix, when I'm fishing with small 5 millimeter tungsten at 60 feet for kokanee, I'm really struggling. Mm -hmm. I'm having to push the gain up way high in order to capture that target on 
the sonar. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is there is a a difference between the types of transducers that you're running for open water versus hard water, and mm -hmm. it does add an additional expense, right? So if you bought the ice unit, you're looking at investing another two hundred, three hundred dollars in the open water transducer. If you're coming from open water to ice fishing, you're probably only looking at another hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. um, for a, a new ice transducer. So there is that added cost, which you know starts pushing these units up to the close to the thousand dollar range if you want them to function both open water and hard water. Mm -hmm. So does uh, Humminbird come with a different cone size, or are they just all set as one? So the co the transducer here has an automatic setting. It can cycle between fifteen degree and twenty one degree cone. Okay. And what were the cone sizes on these? So this one's a 9 degree, and then this one's a 12 degree. So much narrower. Yeah, so and they go all the way up to a oh, it's 15 degree, I think. So your... you can choose what, yeah. what width of cone. So if you're a shallow water fisherman, you're going to go with those 15 degree cones. Mm -hmm. You're out here at 30, 40 feet like us, pound and perch, uh, with small target, small jigs. We want to tighten that cone up. Yep. And so what, the, what you can set your hummingbird to do is to choose the best cone angle for you. And it'll tell you the diameter of the circle at the at that depth for you. It's automatically on there. Uh, but it will cycle back and forth between 15 and 21. So when I'm fishing trout in 8 foot of water, it's pushing out to a 21 degree cone. When I'm out here in 30 foot, it's automatic. But I can manually set that mm -hmm. as well. And then the other added benefit of a lot of sonar units is they now come with integrated GPS technology and mapping. That's nice. Um, so you get standard base maps in a lot of modern sonars now. The, they tend to have pretty poor bathymetry, you know, 5, 10, 20 foot. Um, if you can buy like Lake Master, uh, which is another like 150, 200 bucks for, the, for upgraded mapping, but then you're going to get one foot bathymetry marks. You're really going to be able to pick out those reefs and humps that walleye are going to be holding on, crappie and structure and stuff like that. So you really can use these. And the nice thing about the, the Hummingbird series even more so is that if the pond or lake that you fish isn't in Lake Master, and they have 10,000 plus lakes in there. Um, let's say you ice fish a pond by your house that's just nobody's mapped it. You can actually go out there in the summertime or through the ice and you can I'll use Auto Chart Live. You can create a custom map of that lake on your own. Um, you can either mount it on your boat and drive around yep. or your kayak or canoe and uh, it'll just create a high level detail map for you or through the ice you can just drill a series of holes and mark each of those points and then it will build a map for you. So obviously, you know, the more the farther apart those holes are, the less accurate the yeah. map's gonna be, but at least gives you an idea of being able to map humps and uh, and depth gradients. Okay, then finally we're gonna talk about the Garmin Panoptics. Uh, so this is very different from anything over here. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, very different in price point. Uh, this is just the Panoptics sonar, so you're looking at almost $2,000 to get into this unit. It requires uh, either an Echo 7 or bigger uh, in the Garmin series. They also have several other fish finders that are compatible with the Panoptic system. It comes with a traditional transducer for ice fishing just like the Hummingbird does, but it also has this really rather bizarre transducer, the Panoptics transducer, that does two different things. It does a down view where it shoots outward in a very wide cone. So we're in about 30 feet of water here, and the width of my cone is, I can see the actual feet uh, in each direction, is about 20 feet in each direction. So I can see 40 feet across um, all the fish, and I get directionality. Uh, so I can tell if a fish is 5 feet this way or 5 feet this way. Um, it kind of shoots an oval. It's not a perfect circle. So it's, it's a little bit different than transduce, traditional transducers. But I did want to show that I have to drill two separate holes for the panoptics because it's really hard to bring a fish through the ice when your hole's filled with this giant panoptics transducer. So I usually just fish just off to the left. And here you can see the screen looks a lot different. Okay, so on this screen you can see this is the center where the transducer is, and then these all these individual marks are perch, and it tells me the distance that these perch are away. So these perch are to my right up to 15 feet away and there's perch to my left up to five feet away. This uh, noise here is actually Wyatt's uh, Vexilar transducer pol noise pollution essentially. Um, and it's just about 10 feet off to my right, which is about right because Wyatt's just off camera about that distance away. So 
I can actually see his noise pollution here and I can see the perch that he's working. And um, I can actually see one of the fish that he just pulled up right there is on its way to the surface since he's caught a fish. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So you can actually see real-time separation of different marks uh, down here, which is really neat. You can see my jig right here. You can actually change the angle of that that uh, transducer, which way. It's more of an oblong uh, cone than it is a true like circle or oval. So as I rotate around, I'm actually looking 10 to 15 feet in different directions. But I want to get one that I can really get a good detection on the uh, on the jig. So you can see there's a lot of perch uh, now over here too. Those are to the right because I've rotated it. Um, but there's a lot of perch here. There's a few right here at 28 feet that look hungry. Now you can see the signal's getting kind of weak on that jig. I can still see it. It's not great though. I can go to my menu. I can push my gain up. Um, but then I start to pick up a lot more noise up in that 90. So I'm going to try and balance it. Right around 82 is what I'm going to shoot for. A little bit of snow on there, but not bad. I can still really see the jig well and all the individual fish. So I can really count individual fish here. So there you go. There's a perch. Look at that Christmas tree down there. I could catch perch here all day. Now another thing I can do, um, this is a touch screen too, which is a little bit different than my hummingbirds. Um, I can go back. I can do traditional sonar. Uh, and you can see I'm getting a lot of noise. Here's the perch here. You can tell the helix is a lot cleaner on its transducer. There's a ton of noise here. As you can tell when we go back to panoptics, I don't get as much interference from the competing sonar, so it's less of a concern when I'm running the panoptics. But what the, one of the cool things you can do is you can run combos here where I can run both my sonar and my panoptics side by side. Uh, one of the other nice things about panoptics that I really like is the separation of targets. So if you're jigging in a tent with your buddy, it's freezing outside, you know, it's single digits and blowing, you might be nice and warm in there, and you're both running um, either Vexilars or your uh, sonar in there, you can compete with each other's target. And that's when we were talking about that interference rejection. We're trying to clean up the signal so we can both run our own sonar. With panoptics, I can, you can see each individual target separately they're not going to mask each other's signal. So if we, if I was fishing here and Wyatt was fishing that hole and we were fishing at the same depth, we would both be masking each other's signal. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to tell whose jig is which jig and which, if we saw a fish coming in, we don't know who's going to. We don't know who's going to get bit. With the panoptics, I know exactly who's going to get bit. I know that that fish is targeting that specific lure because I'm getting real time spatial separation of targets. Um, you can pay even more <laughs> on top of life uh, on top of the panoptics sonar and get the live scope which is essentially real-time imaging and that gives you the ability to separate uh you know woody debris targets but you can actually separate fish species really so you can see the outline of individual fish i could say that's a trout that's a perch we could tell by the shape of of the of the target um it would look like a trout it would look like a perch <laughs> so it it's an additional five to seven hundred dollars, so you're almost you're inching close to that three thousand dollar mark for a sonar unit. Mm -hmm. It is substantially heavier and larger. I'm running a sealed lead acid battery in here. It takes a ten amp hour battery, uh, and it will kill it in a day, uh, a full day on the ice. So it it chews through the battery. If you upgrade to lithium for a ten hour, amp hour lithium battery or twelve amp hour lithium battery, you know you're going to be looking at a couple hundred dollars more to try and shave off five or six pounds of weight. Mm -hmm. But it's bulky because I have to carry this large uh, sonar, the panoptic sonar, and I got to carry my traditional sonar. One thing I will say is that the panoptics does not do great at small targets at great depth. Yeah. Um, I have to push the gain up so high that I'm, I'm getting snowed out. Yep. And so that's when I, you know, if I'm targeting deep water kokanee or trout, um, I end up a lot of times either running the traditional. Uh, sonar ice sonar rather than panoptics on here which i have that capacity and i can run them both at the same time which is kind of nice um, or i end up switching to my helix systems uh, just like uh, the hummingbird series you also have charts um, with the garmin 
Um, this one has none of the built-in charts, um, so I have to, I have to buy their lake charts. So with Garmin, you can buy um, some of them come with the maps preloaded. They have specials on that, but you do have to buy the the maps. The hummingbirds all come with a, a, a nice base map. Uh, but I can also do something very different. I can take this back out. I can rotate this, and now I'm in side view. And now I can spy on the fish all around me. You can almost pick him up over there, can't you? Yeah, so there's some fishermen behind the camera. I can actually pick up his jigs and fish from where I'm standing, and I can measure the exact distance to those fish and to their gear. I can look uh, reasonably out about 75 feet. Now one of the things that the to me the side view does really good is locating suspended schools of fish around me and identifying the depth gradient. So I can say, oh look, there's a hump. 15 feet that way, or there's a sunken tree 20 feet that way. I have to drill one hole and I can scout 150 feet. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's impressive. That's really impressive. But it also takes an impressive paycheck to pay for that. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, if you have any questions for me or for Wyatt, just let me know in the comments below. We'll put links to the Vexilar units featured in this video, as well as the Hummingbird and the Garmin. Um, so be sure and click on those if you want to uh, learn more about these different units. And uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What units are you running on the ice? What are your favorites and why? Um, or did this video make you think about maybe upgrading to a different unit? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we'll see you out on the ice next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys. See you, guys.